Hey everyone, Scott here. Sorry about dirty hands. I've been busy. In case you can't tell, there's some changes since last time. So I'm going to walk around, show you what I've done. Let's see. New shoes, same wheels, new legs. And I you know, talked to Tony about these. Um, so glad I got the this gear. <laughs> I was told, that just take a couple hours. Yeah, that took that two hours took me all day. Um and it's not 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 Tony's fault, it's my fault. Just because I, you know, had to drill the same holes over and over and over. Just stupid things I hadn't anticipated, didn't prepare for. Got my like I've shown before, my calipers all done. Got my uh brake lines done. Uh need to pressure test them. So I have <laughs> yes, I have tassels on my airplane. Now that's just until I'm I'm absolutely certain that I'm done and I'll cut those off. Um got kind of clever, I think, creative. So in here I had the the pass through, the uh, firewall pass through, but it was the old one was just a hole in the fabric going through a grommet. Um obviously I didn't want to do that. I wanted, you know, the good fitting. So I looked at putting a plate, attaching it uh, to the frame. And what I came up with was I took a hole saw, made four hole, four circles. Um, you know, clean, clean the edges really good. Painted the outside ones yellow to match the plane. I still need to address this, this edge here. So I sandwiched the two together. So it's it's a pretty good fit. I mean, the, the fabric moves, but um, I think it'll be okay. And once I added this, it really stiffened it up too. So the inside, see if you can tell, I, I didn't use a complete circle. I, I cut it off so it fit underneath the frame and painted it red just because I thought it should be red. And that's my whole reason for it. Um, okay, so engine yay finally so you'll notice right here i've got this porthole i have the pieces we have cut for this we were going to put this channel in there you know you can't tell here but it, it tapers down we were going to put that channel and weld it in well we tried and tried and tried and two different professional welders couldn't get couldn't do a good enough job on the sample on the test pieces so we're going to take those flange that idea for the channel make flanges and uh, rivet those on here so they're mechanical and then fill this with i'm not going to say what but you find it at your local auto parts store in a tube uh, not going to say what it is because you know you shouldn't do that but i've talked to to experts and i think that'll be the the right thing to do just to fill the gap in the pieces here and, and right up here um all of these holes are from the original when the the original owner had the subaru in it let's see um exhaust so this is a original exhaust from mid 90s late 90s um actually it was after that Bought it off of, um, I was going to say Barnstormers, Team Kit Fox. Uh, guy had it for a, a Model 5 for a 912. He didn't know if it was going to fit. We didn't know about the the engine mount. Fits nicely. Um, only problem is, if you can see it, here it doesn't touch. The other side touches. And obviously, you know, that bolt head, it's going to, it's going to wear in here. So, um, and I know there's, there's no cotter pins in here yet. Um, we haven't done the final assembly. This is just making sure everything is going to work. Um, so if you guys have run into this, sorry about the spring. If you guys have run into this, can you let me know what, what you've done to solve it? Um, I, yeah, I don't know. And maybe it's just the difference between the two models and the different mount. I don't know. Anyway, um, 
So I got the oil cooler on. Still got to plumb it. Obviously got to do all the plumbing up here. Um, this engine was originally on a, oh, I don't remember. I was going to say Pipistrel, but I don't remember what it is now. Um, so a lot of the plumbing has, these ports have to be turned and, you know, like back here, it's, you know, it comes right into the, into the mount. So we got to address that before we can call that good and finish putting everything on there. Um, once I, oh, the, the radiator. So my cowling over there has the scoop, which is really nice. Um, so I want to put the radiator, I mean, before it was further back here, I want to put it up here. Uh, sorry, aim the camera. I want to put it up here so it's right at the back of the scoop, but not in the scoop. Um, reason being, I think it's, if it's in the scoop, it fills the space really well. But I think it's going to create an air dam. So if I move it back, you know, leave, leave a, an inch or two inches between the, the end of the scoop and the, and the face of the radiator. I think that's going to allow air that that builds up to move around it and still allow good airflow through. Uh, so let me know what, what you guys have done about that. I'm certainly open to suggestion. Um, so that's really it. Uh, I've got the, obviously the tail up. And oh my gosh, this airplane. <laughs> Does that not look good? I just got to say, I mean, even with, with the interior out and, and the engine not finished, that's a good looking airplane. I uh, cannot wait to get this thing in the air. Uh, anyway, that's my update. Um, I'll have more next week. See ya.